The Office of Readings is part of the Divine Office, or the Liturgy of the Hours, which is one of the ways the Church gives us to pray without ceasing. From really early on in the Church, these prayers were used to punctuate the day, sanctify the day, and give it to God. Traditionally said by clergy and religious, lots of lay people now pray these prayers every day. And many of us might be familiar with morning and evening prayer, perhaps even night prayer, but the Office of Readings can be somewhat overlooked. There are two longer readings in this office. One is taken from the scriptures, and today's reading is from St Paul's letter to the Romans. And then the second reading is a reflection on that from one of the church fathers or from a church document. And this is where the real treasure lies. It's through their reflections we can see the beauty of the scriptures, and it might be revealed a bit more clearly to us than it had been before. If you've never read anything from the Church Fathers before, the Office of Readings is a great way to dip your toe in and to start to experience what they thought and believed and prayed about the scriptures. So today, as we pray this office, remember that whenever we pray with the word of God, uh, God is speaking to each one of us individually and God's word is alive and active. So listen out for part of the Psalms, the prayers or the readings that God is speaking to you and maybe take that word with you into your day so that you can pray throughout the day. It's a good way to ground us at this start of the day and to focus on what God has to say to each one of us. O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. In ancient times God spoke to us through prophets and in varied ways, but now he speaks through Christ his Son, his radiance through eternal days. To God the Father of the world, his Son through whom he made all things, and Holy Spirit, bond of love, all glad creation glory sings. In you is the source of life, we drink from the stream of your goodness. Sin speaks to the sinner in the depths of his heart, there is no fear of God before his eyes. He so flatters himself in his mind that he knows not his guilt. In his mouth are mischief and deceit. All wisdom is gone. He plots the defeat of goodness as he lies on his bed. He has set his foot on evil ways. He clings to what is evil. Your love, Lord, reaches to heaven. Your truth to the skies. Your justice is like God's mountain. Your judgments like the deep. To both man and beast you give protection. O oh Lord, how precious is your love. My God, the sons of men, find refuge in the shelter of your wings. They feast on the riches of your house. They drink from the stream of your delight. In you is the source of life, and in your light we see light. Keep on loving those who know you, doing justice for upright hearts. Let the foot of the proud not crush me, nor the hand of the wicked cast me out. See how the evil doers fall? Flung down, they shall never arise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In, in you is the source of life. We drink from the stream of your goodness. When my heart was faint, you raised me up. O God, hear my cry, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call, my heart is faint. On the rock too high for me to reach, set me on high. O you who have been my refuge, my tower against the foe. Let me dwell in your tent forever and hide in the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, hear my prayer. Grant me the heritage of those who fear you. May you lengthen the life of the king. May his years cover many generations. May he ever sit enthroned before God. Bid love and truth be his protection. So I will always praise your name and day after day fulfil my vows. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. When my heart was faint, you raised me up. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. 
His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the sound of music. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, acclaim the King, the Lord. Let the sea and all within it thunder, the world and all its peoples. Let the rivers clap their hands and the hills ring out their joy. Rejoice at the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with fairness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. I will remember what the Lord has done. I will remember the wonders he has worked from the beginning. We know that by turning everything to their good, God cooperates with all those who love him and with all those that he has called according to his purpose. They are the ones he chose specially long ago and intended to become true images of his son so that his son might be the eldest of many brothers. He called those he intended for this, those he called he justified and with those he justified he shared his glory. After saying this, what can we add? With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, that we may be certain, after such a gift, that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. Not only has he died for us, he rose from the dead. And there, at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we are troubled or worried, or being persecuted, or lacking food or clothes, or being threatened or even attacked. As scripture promised, for your sake we are being massacred daily and reckoned as as sheep for the slaughter. These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, nor angel nor prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing, can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. God brought us to life in Christ when we were dead through our sins. Because he loved us with so great a love. This was to show for all ages to come how infinitely rich he is in grace. Because he loved us with so great a love. You who have been redeemed, consider who it is who hangs on the cross for you, whose death gives life to the dead whose passing is mourned by heaven and earth, while even the hard stones are split. Consider how great he is. Consider what he is. In order that the church might be formed from the side of Christ as he slept on the cross, in order that the word of scripture might be fulfilled, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. God's providence decreed that one of the soldiers should open his sacred side with a spear, so that blood with water might flow out to pay the price of our salvation. This blood, which flowed from its source in the secret recesses of his heart, gave the sacraments of the church power to confer the life of grace. And for those who already live in Christ, was a draught of living water welling up to eternal life. Arise then, bride of Christ. Be like the dove that nests in the rock face at the mouth of the cavern. And there, like a sparrow which finds its home, do not cease to keep vigil. There, like a turtle dove, hide the fledglings of your chaste love. 
place your lips there to draw water from the wells of your Saviour. For this is the spring flowing from the middle of paradise. It divides and becomes four rivers, then spreads through all devout hearts and waters the whole world and makes it fruitful. O soul devoted to God, whoever you may be, run to this source of life and light with eager longing, and with the power of your inmost heart cry out to him, O indescribable beauty of God the Most High, O pure radiance of everlasting light, O life that gives life to all life, O life that illumines every light, and preserves its undying splendour, the myriad flames that have shone before the throne of your Godhead from the dawn of time. O water eternal and inaccessible, sweet and clear, flowing from the spring that is hidden from the eyes of all mortal men, the spring whose depths cannot be plumbed, whose height cannot be measured, whose shores cannot be charted, whose purity cannot be muddied. From this source flows the river, which makes glad the city of God, so that with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, we sing to you our hymns of praise and by experience prove that with you is the fountain of life and in your light we shall see light. Bless the Lord my soul, remembering all he has done for you. He rescues your life from deadly peril, crowns you with the gifts of his kindness and compassion. O taste and see that the Lord is good. He rescues your life from deadly peril, crowns you with the gifts of his kindness and compassion. On this great feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we join together and say the hymn, the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as the Lord. Everlasting Father, all the world bows down before you. All the angels sing your praise. The hosts of heaven and all angelic powers, all the cherubim and seraphim call out to you in unending song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of angel hosts. The heavens and earth are filled with your majesty and glory, the glorious band of apostles, the noble company of prophets, the white-robed army who shed their blood for Christ all sing your praise. And to the ends of the earth, your holy church proclaims her faith in you. Father, whose majesty is boundless, your true and only Son, who is to be adored, the Holy Spirit sent to be our advocate. You, Christ, are the King of glory, Son of the Eternal Father, when you took our nature to save mankind, you did not shrink from birth in the virgin's womb. You overcame the power of death, opening the Father's kingdom to all who believe in in you. Enthroned at God's right hand in the glory of the Father, you will come in judgment according to your promise. You redeemed your people by your precious blood. Come, we implore you to our aid. Grant us with the saints a place in eternal glory. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we glory in the sacred heart of Jesus, your beloved Son, as we call to mind the great things his love has done for us. Fill us with the grace that flows in abundance from the heart of Jesus, the source of heaven's gifts who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, keep us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.